Welcome to a brand new week, everybody. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, taking a look at all things recycling, environment, or anything in the way of what we can do to help protect our planet. Welcome to News Channel 3's exclusive video environmental blog, Your Environment, taking a look at a lot of different topics for this week and also giving you the opportunity to help out where it comes to protecting the planet as well with links and actions. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Questions concerns, anything you got going on in the way of cleanup efforts, recycling, anything like that happening around the Mid-South, we'd love to know about it, but we can't tell anybody unless you tell us. So drop it to this email address at austin.onic at wreg.com. And we'd love to know more about what you've got planned out there, especially as we head into the school year. So something to think about there. And down at the bottom of the screen, you can catch again a whole bunch of information on our social media networks. So stay tuned for more on that as we go throughout the next few days and also weeks. And again, through the rest of August, hopefully getting a lot more events going on as school gets going. More information again at our website, wreg.com slash weather slash environment. If you'd like to see more about what's going on out there where it comes to environmental efforts and other types of information as well. Air quality, not bad. The fires up in Canada have abated just a little bit, so we do not have as much smoke making its way into the continental United States as we did maybe about a week or two ago. So things are looking a little bit clearer out there and that includes right on into the Memphis metro area as well. We continue again to see some pretty good conditions for right now and actually showing green, which is again the information about good air quality. At the bottom of your screen, what you're taking a look at here is the information from the Environmental Protection Agency and the Tennessee Department of Environmental Conservation. Down here, you can see the levels of air quality and again the forecast information available from airnow.gov. If you'd like to find out more about what the air quality is like in your particular area all across the continental United States. Estimates and forecasts available, so all kinds of neat stuff there. If you're traveling overseas, you've got the opportunity to find out more from the EPA about what the air quality is all over the world. It's called the uh, Air Now Department of State to where you can take a look all the way across the world to different agencies and information from different worldwide meteorological agencies, which will give you information about what the air quality is like in a bunch of different countries out there. Worst of the worst for right now, looking into the area around eastern China, close to the coastal states, down toward Hong Kong. And that is, again, where we are seeing some uh, pretty ugly conditions out there. Pl pollution from coal dust stacking up and starting to cause a lot of problems. So some code reds out there at about measured 152 into and around portions of North Korea and down to around, again, Hong Kong. So if you'd like to see more about that, airnow.gov slash index.cfm if you'd like to know more about the Air Now Department of State. Currently across the tropics at earth.nullschool.net. We've got a bunch of dust coming in from off the Sahara Desert. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, this dust will do a very good job, and you can see some of that over parts of the Caribbean and the East Coast. That'll do a very good job of squashing hurricane development. So for right now, the tropics appear to be decently quiet and hopefully should stay that way into the course of the next couple of weeks from what it looks like. We'll have more from the National Hurricane Center coming up a little bit later on. More importantly, Importantly, taking a look at what's going on upwards into and around areas uh, that are close to the North Pole. This area has been getting a lot of attention lately because of its temperatures. Now, right now in the interior of Greenland, we've been seeing temperatures a little bit cooler as some colder air drops down from the North Pole. Unfortunately, very close to the warmer sections of Greenland, temperatures are well above freezing, and that is doing a very good job of melting a lot of the ice. And that has been a worldwide concern over the course of the last several weeks including from several different websites. This one from Gizmodo's Earther page, taking a look at the satellite melting of Greenland with amazing amounts of ice being melted. 12.5 billion tons of ice in one record-breaking single-day meltdown, all thanks to a warm area of air that moved from Europe all the way up into and around the Greenland area. So we were able to document a good portion of what went on there, and that information was transmitted 
translated around the world by various web sources, including the World Meteorological Organization, which has also got information about the fact that July on the planet, the month of July, may have been registered as the warmest month in recorded history, seeing some incredibly hot numbers out there as registered again by the World Meteorological Organization. So there's some great websites to take a look at there in regards to temperatures across the entire planet. More from the University Center for Atmospheric Research and the Center for Science Education about what's going on with Greenland, how it's melting that much faster, and why the temperatures are changing out there. Some of that due to climate change, human-driven climate change, which is doing a very good job of causing warmer concerns for much of the northern and the southern hemisphere. Unfortunately, some of the U.S. government, especially the scientists who monitor this, have been either told to censor or self-censoring themselves in regards to climate science and climate change information. The Audubon Society, good place to take a look and see more about what's going on there and their take on things. And there are many other places you can go to as well, including Scientific American, taking a look at the censoring of climate change information, and then also from the Union of Concerned Scientists. And these are just a few of the places that are taking a look at what's going on out there. As the climate continues to change, so do the attitudes, and a lot of people, according to Vox.com, have been saying that it doesn't matter if we recycle. What really matters is if we are able to make certain that we are able to fight gas and oil to make certain that we can drop the levels of carbon dioxide through the burning of fossil fuels. I think it would be a good idea to work on both sides of those things, if at all possible. And the state of our planet is having an impact on mental health. People are seeing a lot more doom and gloom in some corners. And unfortunately, mental health is being affected by the climate change, the way we as humans are controlling and starting to change the climate. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, a great place to go to for some great environmental reporting is actually Rolling Stone magazine. A bit of blowback on that as a lot of people don't see it as cutting edge reporting, but they do have some very good articles in there. One of which are the articles from uh, uh, author and writer Matt Taibbi, also a guest on local radio stations over the last several months out there. Also, again, from advice columnist Robin Abraham, if you've been trying to get your green levels up and your recycling levels up and your waste level down. She talks about some of her friends who have gotten less than a great response, and that's available in the Boston Globe to talk about more about how you can up your level of recycling and talk up the opportunity to help save the planet out there. Other things you can do, including local efforts, the Wolf River Conservancy has a lot of conservation efforts going on to teach kids, young adults, about things involving conservation, ecology, recycling, things like that, including the family fun paddle on the Wolf River, preserving the wolf from anything involving pollution and waste and terror several service projects which will do a great job of going out into the Wolf River Valley and cleaning up a section of it from trash that gets washed down the watershed which will ultimately go into the Mississippi River Valley. So if you'd like to know more about that just go to wolfriver.org for more details out there. Okay how can you help? One of the best things you can do is go to the rainforestsite.com, click a button, view some ads, and the sponsors will pay to set aside rainforest space. So far for the year, 11 million clicks on the big green button have done a very good job of saving almost a quarter million square feet or 5,500 plus acres. So that's rainforest space that will not be developed. And if you would like to do it, Here's what you do. Just watch the screen over there. I'm going to move the cursor over to the big green button. We push the button. The advertisements will come up here, hopefully pretty quickly because we're running out of time. And you will be able to see the ads. And the sponsors will now pay for a section of rainforest space to not be developed. The air, rainforest is the lungs of our planet, keeping the air clean and fresh, and that's something that we really need to concentrate on, is helping to keep our planet as healthy as possible, and that's one way we can do that. Running out of time, so we got to wrap things up for this week. Thanks for dropping by. For more, stick around on this page and, of course, on all these social media pages. And, of course, if you have events about cleanups or conservation or ecology, whatever it is, we'd love to tell people, drop it to me at the email address down here, austin.onic at wreg.com. That'll do it for this week's edition of Your Environment. 
gentlemen. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another episode coming up next week and also our climate change information on News Channel 3 newscasts.